Okay, so for this problem, we're going to start with five years monthly, so 60 payments in total. First payment is a thousand, and then each succeeding monthly payment will be 2% lower than the prior payment. Okay, well, we've dealt with the growth rate, but now this is a decreasing rate. So we're not adding any one. We're just doing 100% in total minus 2%, which is 0.98 to denote a decrease throughout each period. So this would be at time one. So that means that at time two, it would be a thousand times uh, 0.98 and then at time three it'd be a thousand times 0.98 cubed oh squared sorry since it would be one exponent less than the time indicated above now it says calculate the outstanding loan balance immediately after the 40th payment is made which means that we want to find the outstanding balance at time 40. So what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, set up a present value sort of equation equaling uh, time 40 whilst also using time 40 as the comparison date, obviously. So let's picture what's occurring at time 40 as uh, time zero, right? We usually use the bond pricing formula or we also use just like a simple discounting formula for each payment individually or a present value formula. But this time we're gonna use a geometric sum formula to set it equal to the outstanding balance of 40. So we're gonna do the first term minus the first omitted term over one minus common ratio, right? So now let's think of what occurs at time 41, okay? We know that uh, there's gonna be a payment of a thousand. We also know that there's gonna be a decreasing rate of 0.98. Now we have to figure out what the exponent is. Well, we know that the exponent of the decreasing rate is always one less than the time occurring. So that would mean that at time 41, the exponent of the decreasing rate would be 40. Now, we would also have to discount it back to the comparison date, which is time 40 in this case. So it would be discounted by B. Now, we know that a thousand payments of a thousand will occur in every payment. So we're just going to take out a thousand. Now, we're going to subtract this by the first omitted term. Well, the first omitted term would occur at time 61. So the decreasing rate would be one less than uh, 61, would then it would be 0.9860 times V to the, uh, well, at 61, the, it would be discounted back 21 years to the comparison date for the first omitted term. Then we do one minus common ratio. So what is the common ratio? Well, uh, each uh, payment is uh, discounted by a factor. So we'll take these two values just in case, uh, put them over each other. We find out that the discounts, uh, fact, uh, the common ratio, sorry, is um, 0.98V. Now we're going to solve this equation. So now we're going to do 0.98 to the 40th power times 1.0075, which is 0 0.449043. Four, yeah. And the next part is point ninety eight to the sixty times one point zero zero seven five is negative twenty one, which is point two five four three. And point ninety eight times.
Now let's solve. So 0. 0.44904 minus 0.2543 divided by 1 minus 0.9727. Then we multiply all of that by a thousand. Hold on for a second. Play 98. Sorry about that. I just want to be accurate as possible. 0.442382 minus 0.25433 over 1 minus. Now we're still pouring four, four, two, three. my one one. Now we get six point eight eight nine times a thousand. Then we managed to get six eight eight nine point zero nine, which is around up to 68.9. So again, whenever these scenarios are involved, especially with the geometric sum um, equation, we always wanna be accurate as possible with the decimal. So if it means just writing out all of the decimals and go fill out the calculator, you're gonna have to do that uh, in order to obtain accuracy.